Welcome to King of the Nerds. We have selected 11 of the sharpest brains in Britain to occupy Nerdvana, a nerd haven, where they will compete against each other using brain power, maths, mastery of gameplay, and their knowledge of all things geek culture. Trekky, tracker, I don't mind. All in the company of leading figures from the world of nerd, and under the watchful eye of their nerdy leader, Connie Huck. In the end, there can be only one! <laughs> can it smash? The winner will be crowned King of the Nerds and sit atop the magnificent Throne of Games! It's so pretty, it's so pretty. Are you ready? Yeah! Two geeky teams were created in Nerdvana. Matt became the leader of Team Red, whilst Hannah took on the helm of the Blues. In a nerdy twist of fate... I want the blue team to win. Yeah! The red team lost the first challenge and faced the dreaded Nerdoff, leaving Potter Nerd Robin's dreams of being crowned King of the Nerds up in smoke. A new day dawns at Nerdvana and a mysterious rider with her mythical beast lie in wait with a clue as to what lies ahead. Calling all fellow nerds! Calling all fellow nerds! <laughs> oh my gosh, Connie! Connie looks amazing. Loving the dragon and the getup and the ears. Very cool. I approve. I love the dragon. The dragon. It's just, it's a dragon and it's got big flappy and... I want that sword. That sword is cool. Oh. Dragon. Like, dragon. Greetings. I am Carnivorous. Karata Karishima of the second kind. I come to you from the land of Kinga Tinga Linga with my trusty steed, Nerd Delicious. It's a dragon. We come for the heralding of a new king and the dawning of a new era. A Kinga, a Tinga, a Kinga Tinga Linga. Connie, I have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> Guys, it's me, it's Connie! <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It's hard to tell, isn't it? As you may have guessed, this week's Nerd War is going to be a cosplay competition. Yay. So what's cosplay, you ask? Well, it's basically the compound word of costume and playing. So, cosplay. Nerdy fancy dress, really. Boom, baby! That's my speciality. Blue team, as your team won the last Nerd War, you will get to choose whether to play at being superheroes... <laughs> Or super villains. <laughs> Heroes versus villains? Villains any day. <laughs> I love villains like Pain from Naruto, Orochimaru from Naruto, Aizen from Bleach, Takasugi Shinsuke from Gintama, Ichigo from Bleach, Albane from, from Batman, Venom from Spider Man. Which will it be? We're gonna go for villains. The blue team have chosen supervillains, which means by default, red team, you will be superheroes. Villains have all the fun. You know, they get to have the most demented, dark, bizarre backstories, but heroes just tend to be, you know, Johnny America, hero, rah-rah jocks. Back in Nirvana, each team will find their very own secret layer, kitted out with mystical fabrics from this world and the next. You will have everything you need to breathe life into your fantastical characters. Red team? What red team? We're going to destroy them. Watch out, blue team. You're going to get owned. When we meet again, you will battle it out. Red versus blue to the death! Yeah! That sounds a bit rubbish, doesn't it? Red versus blue. Teams, when we next meet, you shall have renamed yourselves. And henceforth, from that moment onwards, until the rest of time and the death of all of mankind, your teams will be known by their new names. 
Agreed? Aye. Aye. Agreed? Aye. Erdok Nagar! Go on then. Ciao. <laughs> if, if the dragon is watching, I, I, I would like to offer it a loving home and a loving family. <laughs> Nerds across the land are enthusiastic about cosplay because of its links to sci-fi, fantasy and superheroes. Our nerds have three hours before they must present their cosplay creations to a panel of expert judges. Oh, right. <laughs> All right. Okay. We got hats. This is incredible. The war room. This is our villain's laboratory. There's so much cool stuff in here. Both teams have an identical cosplay kit consisting of weapons, foam, fur, shiny things, and what on earth's that? Is this like a cockroach man? Oh my god. They each must create a character and suitable costume for their role. Guys, who can rollerblade? Because I can, man. And as a group, they must craft a legend which explains the origins of their superhero or supervillain team. So we need the setting. We need the setting for In the here <clears throat> In the hero's fortress. We did a little bit of brainstorming at the start. We came up with basic concept of what each person's going to be. Three hours is a push, but I've actually always really wanted to do a puppet, yeah, as a costume, and there's enough stuff here that I think I could, like, do a dinosaur, and you could recruit a dinosaur from history. This would be incredible. Yeah, OK. And then as soon as that was clear, we've split off so that Kenny and Kelly are working on costumes. Oh, but Karen's working on a dinosaur, and me and Matt are trying to hammer out the plot. You're kind of the Victorian era. No, no, and I'm steampunk, I'm like... Yeah, but you're, you're, steampunk is implicitly around yeah. the Victorian period. This is looking more like Indiana Jones gone wrong. <laughs> Over in the villain's lair, they are hatching a fiendish plot. What I'm thinking, I mean, obviously this is from my more scientific background, thinking, but I'm thinking that the world is just literally falling apart from things like climate change and things like that. And the first thing we really need to focus on is building a concrete story and background world. Once we have the story, it should be quite easy to fit the characters into place. We don't trust world leaders and politicians and all that. They're, they've made a mess of the world. They've caused yeah, this dystopian this is, future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's up to us, some of the brightest minds that we have around us, mm -hmm. to take control yeah. because only we can do it properly. Meanwhile, our heroes get busy. I can turn a massive block of upholstery foam into literally anything in the world if I've got enough time and enough pairs of scissors. Oh, can I be a dinosaur with a ray gun? Yes. Brilliant. <gasps> this can be a cape. I like capes. Yeah. Yes. Cape. No capes. Cosplay is very much like how atoms form molecules by joining together and forming bonds. I'm the one who genuinely wants to, like, save the world and believes in all of that. What forms the bond is the storytelling. Combined together and we have the cosplay molecule. Maybe all of you don't necessarily believe in that objective, but you can see an opportunity that if we all get together to achieve your own objectives. Yeah. Hannah may be the captain, but Ryan's taking over the helm of this one. In order to save the world, we're going to have to, like, destroy democracy. We're going to have to just take over and completely change the system. Hey, bet you didn't guess. I'm not just a physics nerd, I'm also creative. I have actually written a novel. In the red room, the raptor's taking shape. <laughs> we are so good at what we do. Everyone's just contributing so much to the team. What are you going to call that thing? Um, I think the guys have decided on some really cool name. Yeah. Guys, what did you call the raptor? Viraciraptor. Viraciraptor. Hey! Get out. Back in the villain's lair, they're still talking. Are we doing like a video? Today it's a video, like recruitment yes. video? Or something? Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. We are spending a lot of time talking about our, our ideas. Maybe two of you are like secretly like lovers or something like that. I just want to wear black and say mean things, man. Can we discuss Emily's costume now? Can we haven't yes, discussed yeah, that at all. Halfway through the task, it's been all talk and no villainous action. <laughs> but our heroes are flying through and even have time for a secret mission. I wonder what the blue team are up to. Should I go find out? I like your thinking. I ain't got an idea. Guys, but my moment has shined. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna spy on the blue team. Rich Kenny. Everyone's favorite super spot, Roach Kenny. <laughs> we exterminate. Right what are you doing? Oh my God, Kenny! What are you doing here in that costume? You look ridiculous. Guess out, bruh. What is all this writing? Nothing's going on here. <laughs> Kenny, get the heck out. Set faces to stun. You just looked at our board. <laughs> Nothing's going on in that team. Yo. They're not doing anything. They haven't even started building. 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure Kenny got a good look at our whiteboard. I'm sick of Kenny in his slight ways. I know, right? Yasmin is not happy about this. Honestly, this definitely means war. <laughs> Before the break, I ain't got an idea. <laughs> Kenny's cockroach capers. We exterminate cockroaches. Created chaos. This definitely means war. Pushing Yasmin over the edge. I'm sick of Kenny and his sly ways. I know, right? Villain Yasmin wants swift retribution for Kenny's spying antics. <laughs> Gentlemen, you can't fight in here. This is the war room. <laughs> Come on, blue team, let's keep focused. Screw the red team, we're gonna win this. Come on. I want to focus on my costume, but Yasmin just running around and chasing Kenny. Stop playing their games. <laughs> the thing that's gonna hurt the most is if we don't have our costumes ready. This is glue! <laughs> what? what? Yeah. This is glue! I don't know what genius picked up a can of glue and thought, I know, I'll wave this round like silly string. Look at me! The glue missed on my hair. Can we just stay focused on actually our, yeah, our yeah. actual task? It doesn't matter what they're doing. The only way we're going to win this is if we get together and just sit down and just get the task done. We've got a great story. We just need the costumes. We can do this now. It's the final countdown for our wannabe cosplayers. Scissors behind you, go. Will our villains pull their costume together in time? You can keep the black. Take, take all of this green off. Will our heroes get their act together? Guys, we still need to rehearse. There's not enough time. And will Mark please put some trousers on? Better air down there, you know? Oh, very nice. Oh, yeah. Find out in about 10 seconds. <laughs> it's time. <clears throat> Sorry. It's time for the Nerd War. Heroes, villains, come join me in the Nerdatorial Arena. Each team must present their legend with each nerd having created their own unique character and costume to fit that comic book universe. Carrie and Kenny have come out with the big guns. Of course he's the superhero. Predictable. Mark Robot is incredible. Oh, cool, a Velociraptor. I want one. Let's do this. Game on. Nerd War begin. We are going to kick their ass. Red Team, by what terminology shall we refer to you from now until the end of time forevermore? Shut that door. What's your name? Who are you? Identify yourself. After much soul-searching, we've decided that we are... The, the Defenders, Defenders of Time! Blue Team, what should one call you from now until the universe implodes in an act equal and opposite to that of the Big Bang? We are the extremely valiant independence league evil. Evil. Defenders of time and team evil, you will now each perform a story that will resonate throughout the ages and that will also astound our trio of highly esteemed judges. First up is Charlie Hounslow, makeup and prosthetic artist to the stars. Her film credits include Guardians of the Galaxy, The Avengers, and Harry Potter. Oh my God, she did makeup for The Avengers. That means she got to touch Tom Hilson's face. <sighs> Next is Howard Burden, a highly acclaimed TV costume designer. His credits include Red Dwarf, Doctor Who, and Robin Hood. If I disappoint the Doctor Who costume designer, I will be very sad. And finally, creator of my dragon, Nerd Delicious, it's Tabitha Lyons, an internet cosplay sensation. She's a super Comic-Con judge and a professional prop and costume creator. Oh my god, it's Tabitha. Her costume is amazing. These three judges have worked on everything. The judges will be looking for creativity, originality, performance, and character interaction. Team Evil, as you were last week's winners, you will present first. Possibly the strongest costume on either side is Mark's robot. I mean, the power drill is a work of genius. <laughs> I am Professor Asimov. Many years ago, my body was destroyed in a hideous lab accident. Now, I have only my human head. Since then, I have discovered 
that humanity is riddled with imperfections. Now, I am perfection! 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 Born into wealth and power. I am Lady Emerald. We shall take down those in rule using our own methods. I am Miss Sandry. I was once one of you, a lovely little superhero. But I realized your methods just don't work. People are seeing Emily as this huge threat, but her costume doesn't have as much pep as I thought it would. I was expecting her to at least do sort of a monster head or a mask or something like that, because that's her, you know, that's her specialist subject. That is her thing. Superheroes have gone the way of the dinosaur. <laughs> My home of Tuvalu was destroyed in the Great Flood of 2029. I am going to show the people reality. I am going to whip them into shape. For I am the whip of truth. The poison is thick in the air today. The seas have risen. The climate is out for us. There is little hope left in this world that we call our home. But we shall be that hope. I am Count von Kracknor. I've assembled the brightest minds and misfits that this world has to offer. For only together can we fix this planet, and we shall take the power back into our hands. Oh my god, Ryan actually has that in him? I wasn't sure if he'd, he'd be sort of up for this, if, you know, doing a big broad performance in front of an audience, but he's really selling it. Together. We are evil, extremely valiant, independent league. Evil! <laughs> <laughs> Choose us for the, the god of humanity. humanity. <laughs> I'm really, really proud of Team Evil today. I think they just stepped up the game a little bit. That's how Team Evil rolls. It was brilliant. For three hours, putting that together is pretty impressive. And I love the evil factor. There's so much you, can, you can play on that. Professor, I love the fact that you have a drill. <laughs> I also love how it brought your character to life. You used it to go with your movements. I think performance is a big aspect. Hi, guys. Well done. Really, really good efforts. Individually, I think you stand on your own merits, but it would have been interesting, I think, if we'd have brought a bit of performance together. You know, Lady Emerald played with Professor Asanoff, and, you know, so you've got a bit of um, role-play going on there. Well, well done. They are completely right. Our performance lacked. We didn't kind of really interact with each other. That was frowned upon. Defenders of time, you may present. I am Peregrine de Vere. Scientific hero! Or I was when I gave a damn. I am Pema Guindavere, and I am a hero. Oh, alas, poor Velociraptor! Born in the Jurassic period, a mutant with an inexplicable grasp of the English language. I love the dinosaur. Karen? She's gone completely left field, thinking really out of the box here. This is going to be really interesting. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I will be your party host for this evening and until the end of time. I am nameless. I'm sent here to destroy the human race. Team Evil has conquered these lands, and I fear the end is nigh. Humans, get down to where you belong. Prepare to die. Stop! Why should I listen to you? Because I know you. I'm pretty sure I know you. You're me. Yes, I, I am you, but I'm you from the past. Enough that talking! You're... But, 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 wait. I have seen a you who is not like this. What do you mean? I can show you with the time toroid! Tickle. Behold, the Red Team's time machine, a roll of duct tape. How is that going to generate a portal or something like that? How do you build the einstein rosen bridge? Where are we? Hmm, Jurassic. Brothers, fellow dinosaurs, do not fight, please! We can be good! There is good in this world! Meet the world's first hero. This is only one hero. I'm trying, come on. There's more of the time toroid! A time toroid? <laughs> oh my! It's on fire! Destruction everywhere! There is
there is no good in the world anymore. Good evening, ladies oh. and gentlemen. I will be your host until the end of time, which is approximately five minutes from now. So everybody out there, turn those frowns upside down and let's get our boogie on. Why is she so happy? She's happy because she is a hero. She sees good even in the last five minutes of the world. Together, if we burn this one, we can become one, two, three, defenders of time! That's it. Nothing to see here. We're done. I can't fault the dinosaur performance. I think the dinosaur could win an Oscar. I love how you made full use of the stage and we could clearly understand your characters very quickly and I love the dynamic of the raptor. Ah, ah. It was a five minute performance and you got a laugh, quite a few actually, so it was, oh, it worked really well. Thank you. All I would have said uh, when you're performing, uh, you had your backs to us a few times, so just make sure you yeah. always try and face the front as well, but other than that, great job. Really good effort. There was a real cohesion between the characters that you portrayed. Just from a costume point of view, the plinsole issue with Nameless, maybe, it just sort of cuts it dead. It's nitpicky, but overall, well done. Kenny's trainers are apparently a problem, because in the deep, dark, dystopian future, trainers have, of course, according to the great convention of 2031, been outlawed. <laughs> well, teams, our judges have deliberated and cogitated, and now, it's make your mind up time. Well, teams, our judges have deliberated and cogitated. And now, it's make your mind up time. Charlie, who will you be awarding your one point to? I award my one point to... Defenders of Time. Yes. Well done, fellows. <laughs> Two to go. Still plenty of room for Israel <laughs> to triumph. Howard, who will you be awarding your one point to? Really tough choice, but my one point will go to... Team Evil. Oh. Evil! Howard Burden didn't pick us. This makes me sad. This all hangs on the next decision. Tabitha, who will you be awarding your one point to? I'm so nervous. Who's Tabitha going to vote for? Please, please pick us. Both teams did excellent. I love the professor, I love Nameless but I absolutely love that pop-up. My point will go to Defenders of Time. Yes! Oh, yes! Dinosaur bounce! We've lost our first proper challenge and we've blown it. Oh. Defenders Bye. of Time! Yeah, we won. We won. We won. Won a tough, yeah. Yeah. This is my gracious loser face. Good has once again triumphed over evil. Congratulations to Defenders of Time and a huge thank you to our judges. Thank you. Defenders of Time, you will be going back to Nerdvano and as a reward for your valiant efforts, you will be greeted by a kingdom of candy. Hey. Hey. Team Evil, <laughs> there will be no treats for you tonight. The raptor stole our prize. Tomorrow, Two of your members will go head to head in the nerd off. As always, one of these will be voted for within the team, and the other will be nominated by Defenders of Time. Thank you. You may return to Nerdvana. It's a sweet treat for Defenders of Time, but a bitter pill to swallow for Team Evil. <laughs> ah, the extremely valiant Independence League are in the nerd off. No, 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 no. Oh, that stupid dinosaur won them that. Our whole team was distracted by the whole ordeal with Yasmin. Those minutes would have been useful if we could have had them. I knew we shouldn't have spent an hour and a half writing the story. Just didn't do enough, guys. We didn't make a skit. That's it, That's it, though. All the time that we did spend on the story, we should have spent on a script. Yeah, yeah at the yeah. Not all, not all of the time, but... Yeah. Um, no, I think we should have been doing it at the yeah, same I mean, time. Apart from, like, 
their dinosaur. I still think that our costumes are better, even though they had two cosplayers. Subtract the puppet, yeah. and it was Subtract definitely not what it was at all. Yummy! Whilst Team Evil dissect their defeat, the Defenders of Time are about to experience the sugar rush that comes from winning the Nerd War. Lucky. Oh, wow! <laughs> That's awesome! Gunny oh. likes sweets. I can taste sweet victory. <laughs> no, no, I can't get it. To winning. Wow. Yeah. Brain freeze. Yeah. <laughs> I don't feel bad for the other team. We worked really hard to deserve this treat, and we're going to enjoy it. Team Evil know full well what lies ahead with the dreaded nerd off beckoning. So this means that one of us is going to go. I don't want to have to pick someone on our own team. Mm. I don't want to have to choose someone. It's pretty scary to be up against one of us. Yeah. 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 We were happy to have a really strong team. <laughs> yeah. But now it's scary. Yeah. Not only must Team Evil sacrifice one of its own, the opposing team also nominates someone from Team Evil who they want to eliminate. I think it's pretty clear that they're going to vote between either Mark or I. To be honest, I'm feeling it's probably going to be me with a big target on my back. No, I'm right, I've got it in for me. I know, righty. I just don't want to go to I just don't want to go home to Rowdy, man. I think either we come to a decision as a group, maybe we all volunteer, or we keep it just anonymous. I, 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 I prefer to keep, keep it anonymous. anonymous. Who are we actually voting for? It's, yeah. I, it's definitely either Ryan Mark or Ryan. Yeah. I think Ryan. Ryan's possibly the biggest threat, because that man is a machine. Emily is obviously a strong competitor because she's got a lot that no one else here does. However, mm. she, her thing was this challenge and she lost this challenge. Her biggest strength is gone. Ems has got a wide variety of skills. I think she's hiding something. I think it's definitely Ryan, Ryan, Mark and Emily as the three strongest people on the team. My vote is, is going to Ryan. OK. There's five of us. It doesn't have to be unanimous. So are you guys happy to put it to a vote and go with the majority? Yeah, I'm yeah. happy, with, I'm that. happy, I'm happy with that. that. Bit of fresh air, man. Oh, yes, certainly. Ryan and Mark step out, leaving the girls alone to discuss the vote. But little do they know that Emily has an evil plan. We can decide between the three of us now that we have the majority vote, and to protect each other from the vote, we can vote for Ryan or Mark. But we're going to lose but one of them. We don't want to lose either of them. We're, we're definitely going to lose one of them if we do that. Yeah, so do we exactly. really want to? But then we don't want to go home either. Emily seems really sweet, but she's been surprisingly manipulative. It to be honest, to be I'm not really up for the whole majority voting thing. I do just think we should just vote. How much do you want 15 grand? <laughs> Emily was the one to come up with the idea that we should protect ourselves. If we do it this way, we are certain that we're not going home tomorrow. Mm. But we're not. Well, Unless the other know. team picks one of us, which exactly. I really don't, I don't think they will. Think, it's making me realise that she's more calculated than I first thought. I think they're going to pick Mark, the other team. Yeah. So I'd vote Ryan. Ryan. We vote for Ryan. She makes a very good point, though, because it means I will be safe. Well, I'll pick Ryan, too. I just don't want to go home tomorrow. I know it's a selfish decision to make, but we have the power to protect ourselves tomorrow, and we'd be stupid not to take it. Conspiracies afoot in Team Evil, but will Emily's power play pay off? It's the day of reckoning for Team Evil, but who will face the dreaded nerd off? Good morning, nerds. Welcome back to the throne room. Today, two more of you will compete in the dreaded nerd off. This is it. This is where it all hinges. The winner, of course, will stay to compete us for the crown and earn the right to sit atop the mighty throne of games. <laughs> The loser will face extermination. I'm so nervous and I'm not even on the firing line this week. Mark in particular just looks absolutely <laughs> petrified. I feel sick. Team Extremely Valiant Independence League, or Team Evil for short. I have your votes tallied here. The first nerd nominated by the majority of your own team and going into this week's Nerd Off is... Please just turn it. Please just get this over with. Please just get this over with. Ryan. No, it's just... It was just a real surprise. Ryan? Why Ryan? He's one of their strongest members. I do see this as a betrayal. I was sure I was going to get chosen, but to be chosen by my team, 
That's just so, so hurtful. So, Count, how do you feel? I'm so proud of my team. Why do you think your team picked you? Well, I, I, I think it's probably more um, self-protection. Team Evil, why Ryan? Yasmin, Hannah and I were left alone in a room without the two boys, and we decided to protect ourselves for another day. Although the decision was made by the three of us, looking back, I do think that Emily did coerce us into deciding this. I'm fuming. I realised it was a terrible decision, but it's done now, so... I think the cracks are starting to show in Team Evil. Girls versus boys. <laughs> do you still feel that you belong to a cohesive team? I hope so. I do. Team Evil's so split right now. They're in danger of really becoming evil. Defenders of time. I have your votes tallied here. The second nerd facing this week's nerd off is... Emily and the Team Evil Girls conspire to send fellow teammate Ryan into the nerd off. But who have opposing team Defenders of Time chosen to face him? Emily. I can't believe it's me. How ironic that she was trying to protect herself and now she's up for the nerd off anyway, against Ryan. Emily, how do you feel at being voted upon by the opposing team? <laughs> I'm pretty shocked. We thought they'd pick Mark because he has one of our strongest players. And I'm kind of hoisted on my own petard here. <laughs> I chose our other strongest player to beat me. Emily is much less of a threat, so potentially I'll have a chance now. Ryan, Emily, please step forward. You will face a 90-second quick-fire quiz on a subject chosen for you by your opponent. Ryan, please choose a subject for Emily. Oh, this is a hard choice. I'm going to go for Geek TV. Geek TV? I don't even own a TV. <laughs> Emily, which category will you choose for Ryan? I'm going to go with British Kings and Queens. There's a finite number of kings and queens, so, yeah, I think I've got a reasonable chance. Ryan, who would you like to pick to assist you in your preparation? I would like to pick Mark. Ryan, I just got to chuck this out there. Matt has a history degree from Cambridge, mate. Do you accept? No. No? I would have preferred it was you. Please pick another assistant. Hey, Matt, want to go? <laughs> I'd like to be able to help Ryan and uh, help him get the hell out of here. I will accept. Thanks. Why are you helping Ryan? I still really want Ryan out, and if I can't do it on my team, if there's anything I can do to make it happen, then I'm going to use my wickedly devilish ways to do it. Emily, who do you pick to assist you? Any suggestions? <laughs> uh, Ems, I'm good at 80s, 80s and geeks. I can do it. OK. Mark just refused Ryan and said he was going to help Emily instead. Is there something between them two? <laughs> They're not telling us. Ryan, Emily, feast on the facts and figures or face the consequences. Off you go. I'm going to go, I know. I literally stand no chance. I'm, I might as well just give up now. Emily and Ryan now have two hours to cram as much information as possible into their nerdy brains. But will their swap mates be a help or a hindrance? Let's start with the basics. Star Trek. Star Trek Next Generation, 1987 to 1994. 87 to 1994. I remember that. Captain Picard. Yeah, I know that. So glad Mark is here. He is taking control. I'm so glad he offered his help. I don't know who came after um, William the First. It's William II. Oh, OK. Unsurprisingly. My whole strategy for Ryan is not to give him wrong information, but too much of useless information. Matt's being really helpful, which is good because time is really tight right about now. William the First was counted in Fillet's castle. F, I, wait, sorry, F A L A A I I S S E, which is a French cliff. So much information is cramming into his head that it could potentially explode. 
That was intense. Right, so, yeah. yeah. I was really shocked that you picked Ryan because we figured that he was one of the stronger members of the team. He's very good at studying. Emily is scarily, scarily schemy. Yeah. Because she was the one that suggested it in yeah. the first place. The idea was we could save ourselves by picking one of those two. Yeah. Because of that, are you glad that Emily's in the nerd off? Yeah, totally. Yeah. The rest of Team Evil are being really catty. It's clear who they want to win this nerd off. And it's not Emily. I hope Ryan's gonna stay. Yeah. I do want Ryan to stay. But Ryan's got Matt helping him. Yeah. Which is weird. <laughs> <laughs> Helen of Aquitaine. The line of winter's based on his reign, starring Catherine Hepburn. If he just keeps listening to the garbage that I'm feeding him, this junk data is gonna massively cause a meltdown. What did William, what, what William II what does he have from um, Selby? What did what, 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 Gary have Navarre? What, 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 what dates does he have from um, Where are the toilets, anyone? Every minute's precious at this point, and we're not wasting any time whatsoever. Janeway, captain. Jane, Janeway's captain. I learned the names of the crew of the Star Trek Voyager whilst having a wee. And Isabella and Isabella. So Isabella of Gloucester and Isabella of Angoulême. Cat Von Trapnell thinks he's the real villain? You're just looking at a new one, Buster. <laughs> Time has run out for Emily and Ryan. Have their mammoth swat-ups been enough to pass the ultimate nerd test? When I nominated Ryan, I never, ever thought I would be in a nerd-off against him. This could be it. This is going to be the end for one of us. The Nerd Bowl is not a nice place to be. It's a big old bowl of death filled to the brim with evil. Here we go. It's all to play for now. Things are about to get serious. Welcome to the Nerd Bowl. It's nerd versus nerd in a battle royale to the death, where your answers will echo from here to eternity. Brian, you have 90 seconds on the given subject of kings and queens. Your time starts now. Following the 1066 Norman invasion, who became king of England? William I. Correct. Of course, he's got the first one right. Here we go. The Wars of the Roses were fought between the House of York and which other house? Tudor. Incorrect. Lancaster. Oh. In 1653, <laughs> who became Lord Protector of England during the Republican Commonwealth? Oliver Cromwell. Correct. Which monarch was the Queen's great-grandfather? George the Second. Incorrect. No. Edward the Seventh. <laughs> Queen Victoria was married to her first cousin for 21 years. What was his name? Prince Albert. Correct. Which King of England was known as the Hammer of the Scots? James the Sixth of Scotland. Incorrect. Edward the First. Ryan, your quizzing technique's all up the creek here. If you don't know it, pass. You'll get more questions in. You're running out of time. Who has served the longest as consort of a British monarch? Prince Philip. Is correct. What was the royal family name before it was changed to Windsor during the First World War? I'll pass. The answer was Saxe Coburg Gotha. In 1603, which King of Scotland became James I of England? James VI of Scotland. Correct. Who was the British monarch when the Titanic sank in 1912? Edward VI. Incorrect. George V. To which royal house did King Edward I, II, and III all belong? <laughs> Ryan, you're out of time. The answer was House of Plantagenet. So, Ryan, after that round, you scored a total of five points, which means, Emily, you need six points or more to win. How do you feel at this moment in time? Worried. <laughs> I couldn't have answered any of those questions. Still going home. Emily, your given subject is Geek TV. You have 90 seconds on that subject, and your time starts now. Which cult show that began in 1997 was set in Sunnydale, California? Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Correct. What is the name of Sabrina the Teenage Witch's cat? Salem. Correct. I think Emily might have downplayed her TV knowledge because she really has shown that she knows her stuff about this. In Quantum Leap, who was Sam Beckett's regular hologram assistant? Al. Correct. Which sci-fi series that drew upon Egyptian and Norse mythology was a spin-off of a 1994 film? Stargate. Correct. Played by Jerry Doyle, which character in Babylon 5 shared the name with a current filled biscuit? Bah, pass. Michael Garibaldi in Third Rock from the Sun, who starred as Tommy Solomon? Pass. 
Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Barry Norman's final series as host of the BBC's film review programme was in which year? Pass. Film 98. Astronaut John Crichton was pulled into a wormhole in which 1998 series produced by Jim Penn? Correct. In a Simpsons Halloween special, which Star Wars actor reads Edgar Allan Poe's poem The Raven? Harrison Ford. James Earl Jones. The voice of Darth Vader. Which of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was usually armed with nunchucks? Michelangelo. Correct. <laughs> I'm afraid your time is up. Emily, I can confirm you scored six points, which means congratulations, you have won this week's Nerd Off. <laughs> What do you mean I beat Ryan? How many won? I love it when a plan comes together. This is like a single shot from an X-Wing taking down the Death Star. The best nerd one here. Assimilating a knowledge of decades of TV in two hours is pretty impressive. The best nerd did not win. Unfortunately, Ryan, you didn't answer enough questions correctly. And your time at Nerdvana is now at an end. Please leave now. You have not seen the last of Count Von Cracknor. <laughs> <laughs> Evil! Good luck, Ryan. Well done. I'm so sad to be leaving, and particularly at such an early stage. If it had been the red team choosing me to get rid of me, seeing me as a threat, then that would have been good, but the fact that it was my own team doing it against me, that just makes this so much harder to swallow. The evil will prosper in a new species. <laughs> so go, trend on Twitter. Bring back Cracknor. Oh, sad to see, but there goes our rocket man. Whew, that's gotta hurt. To Kite Von Cracknell. And Evil! 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 <laughs> now that Ryan's left, there's gonna be a Mars sized hole in Team Evil. Ryan's going home. Team Evil is completely divided. I'm actually feeling pretty chuffed. Oh. <laughs> I'm really f Ryan's on. I would rather have him here than Emily here. I wanna let her know what I think of her. I feel like I'm in Lost and everyone else in Nirvana are the others. No one is what they seem to be. We're on the same team. Yeah. And I feel like the tactics you tried to employ yesterday were kind of too snaky. I just wanted to not go home. I'm not about to get dragged into this game mm. and start pretending to be someone else. We I'm just not, want to play as a team. We're a team yeah. at the end well, of the day and we need, to, we need to win as a team. Essentially, you're saying that you can't really trust me. I trust no one. I'm only looking out for me, the whip of truth. Next time on King of the Nerds. Yeah! Oh! Tensions rise. Just let me talk. F me. As the teams come face to face with a nerd giant. Yes! I love you, Hodor! Battling the elements in the Castle of Thrones challenge. Ah! I'm ready for battle. Who will triumph and be crowned kings of their castle? Getty! Splash! No. And who will be banished from the kingdom of Nerdvana? Debbie's in a spot of hot water and she's struggling to clear her name. That's in brand new Yonderland tomorrow at 8. And you can see the series so far with Catch Up TV. And coming up next on Sky One, the crew of the Nathan James are in for an emotional trip home in brand new The Last Ship. <laughs>